this video is going to introduce our next module. So last week we, uh, we studied the multiple and simple linear regression models and we just kind of assumed that they work. But these models um, actually make a lot of assumptions and um, you know, things can go wrong if those assumptions aren't, aren't satisfied. So the next week is, is going to be spent on trying to understand, you know, what are we assuming? Um, how do I know whether or not these assumptions are met? Uh, what happens if they're not met? And then how do I fix them? So um, I call this assumptions, diagnostics, and remedies. So last week what I said was, um, you know, the linear regression model is as follows. We have some dependent variable that is a linear function of a bunch of predictor variables, which I called the systematic part or the signal. Um, and then there's a random part, um, which are these errors. Now we made some specific assumptions about these errors. Um, the first is that these errors have mean zero. Second is that the, the uh, errors have a constant variance. Um, another assumption that we kind of made is that they're normal and that they're uncorrelated. So I want to go over each of these in turn um, and, and more on why I say we kind of assume the normality. All right, so um, the first assumption was a linear function and the linear function is you know, implied by the fact that these x's are linear, fun uh, you know, the y's are linear functions of the x's. Um, so we're going to talk about Residual plots. Residual plots um, uh, are, are the most important plots to look at. Um, and that's going to be our main way to diagnose if linearity is not, um, uh, uh, you know, plausible. And, um, okay, so what happens if we don't have a linear function? Well, the problem is you end up with biased predictions. So just to illustrate this, uh, I'm going to go over to um, my... my uh, my paper here, and let's just say I had a single predictor where I have an x and a y. And maybe my uh, scatter plot looks something like this. All right, and so I'm, I'm trying to uh, make it really obvious that this is not a linear function. So if I were to stick a line on this, so let's say I fit my best um, you know, line, and it looks something like this, um, but the real function looks like this. Okay, so um, I, now, you know, the, the real function is nonlinear. Um, I've assumed a linear function, and that's just not right. All right. So what I said is that your predictions are biased. And so, for example, um, the points down here should have a predicted value on this, on this curve, yet, um, you know, I'm going to make predictions up here. Okay, so all of my predictions are biased upward, because remember... The line is, is what's giving us our y hat values. Um, likewise, up, up in this region, you're going to see all my predicted values are too low. Um, the real curve sits above that. And then over here, my predicted values are too high. So whenever you have a nonlinear uh, x, a nonlinear function, and you've assumed a linear functional form, you end up with biased predictors. What do we do about that? Well, we're going to see in our next video that the remedy is to transform your predicted predictor variables. All right, so more on that in the next video. Uh, this is just an overview. Okay, well, what else have we assumed? The next thing that we've assumed is that the variance of your errors must be constant. All right, so um, that, that's coming from right here. Um, let's, uh, let's just go sketch out a, a plot of that. Um, while I'm doing that, I just want to point out one more thing. Um, the um, assumption that the errors have mean zero um, get, um, uh, uh, you know, shown by, by the fact that here the residuals don't have mean zero. You have a bunch of points below the line. You have a bunch of points above the line. Therefore, the residuals here are all positive. The residuals here are all negative. The residuals here are also going to be negative. So notice E at these errors um, is not equal to zero. Now let's go to my other uh, assumption. So I just said that we're also assuming, um, you know, uh, homoscedasticity. So let me uh, just sketch out a situation where we don't have homoscedasticity. 
So maybe my points start looking like this. All right. And the point I want to make is that that the you know the uh, the um, the errors kind of fan out. Okay, so the variance of the errors uh, here um, are much greater than the variance of the errors down here. All right. So um, the problem this creates is that with ordinary least squares, we give every um, you know error, every estimated residual. The same amount of weight. Now, um, if we do that when you've got heteroscedasticity, you end up giving a whole lot of weight to the errors in this region, and you don't give much weight at all to the errors down here. So it's like these points don't count as much as these points. All right, and that leads to um, what's known as an inefficient estimator. Okay, so these um, the 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 estimates that we end up with are not the best linear unbiased estimates, meaning the most, uh, the lowest variance that, that could possibly be. All right, so what do we do if we have non-constant variance? Well, the answer is, um, in, in the next video, we're gonna see you wanna transform Y. Okay, so what you wanna remember is that nonlinear functions, you transform X. Uh, non-constant variance, you're gonna transform Y. The transformation of Y uh, we're going to call a variant stabilizing transformation because it stabilizes these variances. Another remedy is to use the GLM, the Generalized Linear Model. So we're going to see that uh, very soon when we get to logistic regression. Other generalized linear models are like the Poisson regression model that also take care of this. Okay, so you can either transform your Y, that's, that's a simple approach, uh, probably a better approach is to use a GLM when you can do that. All right. Um, another assumption that we make is that these errors are uncorrelated. Okay, so the, uh, you know, one error doesn't have a correlation with another error. I'm not going to say much about this at all in this class. Um, when, when uh, you know, the most common source of having correlated errors is when you have autocorrelations. So um, these typically come up when you have time series data. So if my observations are say weeks and um, uh, my, uh, my Y value is sales, this week sales, last week sales, the week before, often those errors um, are correlated. Um, uh, suffice it to say that um, whenever you have a time series data, you ought to suspect that you've got these autocorrelations. Um, we're not going to cover that in this class. That you take a take a course in econometrics, and um, they'll they'll spend a whole lot of time on them. Um, what what goes wrong is you end up with um, uh, the wrong variances. Okay, so all your significance uh, tests and confidence intervals are um, are, are not right unless you do some uh, you know, corrections to them. All right, but that's, that's all I'm gonna say about correlated errors here. Um, what else do we assume? Well, we've also assumed that the errors have a normal distribution. Now, remember I said uh, we sort of assume that. Um, ordinary least squares, o OLS, um, doesn't assume uh, uh, normal errors. The only time we need these normal errors is when we um, want to do a t-test or an f-test or if we're going to make a confidence interval. That's when we need them. All right, um, what, are do, what to do about it? Well, to be honest with you, I, um, I don't worry that much about normal errors unless my sample sizes are very small. Okay, so if my sample sizes are small uh, and I want to do a confidence interval or a hypothesis test, then I worry. Other than that, I don't worry. The reason for this is I've got the central limit theorem. So what the central limit theorem says is if you have large enough samples um, and you're adding or averaging uh, some, some quantities, um, the average or the total becomes approximately normal. Okay, so you're kind of covered if you've got a, a, a you know, decent sample size on that. Uh, nevertheless, what, what we're going to see is that Often when you transform Y, or if you use a GLM, so if you fix this earlier problem, 
um, you um, you often fix the the normal errors. Not always, but but often. All right. So, um, you know, in terms of priorities, I, I worry a lot about nonlinear functions. I worry somewhat about non-constant variance, um, and then these. Uh, you know, I, I worry about correlated errors uh, when I've got time series data. Now, I just want to mention two more things. Uh, one is uh, outliers, the other is uh, collinearity. These aren't really assumptions, but they cause problems if you have them. So uh, with an outlier, we're going to use uh, something called a leverage plot to detect that in the next uh, video. The problem is that this will create unstable estimates. So I'm going to take you through um, a, a case that illustrates that. Um, one thing that doesn't get covered later on is what to do about it. So what do you do about outliers? The first thing that you should always do when you have outliers is to ask yourself a simple question. The question is, why is it an outlier? Now, there's two possible answers to that question. One answer is, it's a mistake. Okay, so I did something wrong. I typed the data in wrong. There was a, you know, an error when the data got transmitted. Um, and so if the, if the value is an outlier because it's a mistake, you either fix it or you want to get it out of there. If it's, a, you know, drop the case, set it to missing. The other possible answer to that question is it's a correct but extreme value. So uh, in that case, there's, a, you know, the, 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 there are actually a lot of considerations. One thing that, um, you know, often works uh, to fix this and makes sense to, to, to fix it is uh, when you make your transformations. So if you take logs um, the, the, or take square roots, um, that's going to reduce the influence of these extreme cases. I'm just going to mention there's other versions of, ro of, of regression called robust methods. So an example of a robust statistic is the median versus the mean. Okay. Um, there's similar versions for regression. You can read about those on your own if you're um, if you're interested. Okay, so that's my introduction to um, what assumptions the linear model makes. How do we detect them? So more details on that in the next video. Um, why is it a problem? And then what do you do about it?